there are also big organised science competitions with big prize money. The idea being it will help inspire innovation and give researchers something to aim for. And our next story, it's about one such competition. The twist is that whilst the science and engineering is being put to the test, the actual competitors are unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs. As the name suggests, these aircraft are autonomous. They fly themselves. But they can only do that well if there's a lot of very clever programming and onboard technology. This competition has been running since 2007 and attracts lots of international teams keen to test their metal and their UAVs for the chance to win the $50,000 prize. And all they've got to do is find this guy. OK, so he may not be a real person, but everything else is deadly serious about this competition, including this Aussie team that made it to the final stages. Trying to find someone that is lost in the outback can often take a lot of time, money and manpower. But with a little bit of electrical engineering and software programming, small aircraft like this can do a lot of the work for us. Hi, I'm Alex and this is Chris, and our team Compass UAV built this aircraft for the UAV Search and Rescue Challenge. To qualify for this competition, we needed to build a fully autonomous plane that could fly itself and complete a search and rescue mission to find a lost bushwalker named Outback Joe. And once we found Joe, we had to deliver him a life-saving water bottle. Outback Joe was placed in farmland kilometres away from the UAV launching site, so we had to develop a UAV that could fly over a large distance while imaging the ground below and have the ability to hold and drop a water bottle, all without human interaction once the plane has taken off. Sounds like a pretty big ask, doesn't it? Well, let's take a close look at the aircraft and see how we put this UAV together. At the heart of the UAV is an onboard computer. This computer processes information from a whole range of systems on board and autonomously makes decisions on what the plane should do to complete the mission. But the UAV isn't left completely to its own devices. There's a fair bit of programming to do before takeoff. For starters, the onboard computer has a set of GPS coordinates punched into it, which gives the UAV a specific flight path to follow. After takeoff, an autopilot steers the plane over the programmed GPS coordinates. There are also a range of sensors on board, such as gyros, accelerometers, and a compass that calculate the wind speed, direction, height of the UAV from the ground, and the battery capacity remaining. All this information is constantly being sent back to us at the ground station via a powerful radio link so we can map the UAV's progress. And if this link fails, there is a safety system on board which will terminate the flight. This guarantees the UAV can't fly out of control if we lose communications with it. The images taken during flight don't travel along this link though, they're actually uploaded to the web. On the underside of the plane is a HD webcam that captures images throughout the flight. These images then stream live to a website we've created via a number of 3G USB modems. You've probably seen one of these before. People plug them into their laptops to connect to the internet. This piece of everyday technology allows us to crowdsource our search and rescue mission, meaning that trained specialists from around the world can log on to our website during the flight scour all of the images that are being uploaded and help find Joe. So in the future, this sort of technology combined with image recognition could mean that somebody sitting at home on their computer could help find somebody lost in the outback. 